Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about design of a reinforced concrete rectangular section under uh, single reinforcement for tension. Then we'll extend our discussion to include also uh, conversion, conversion or conversive steel. As you can see on the screen, basically I have my setup uh, for Excel. I have concrete and material properties for 4,000 PSI. Yield of reinforcing the steel is 60 KSI. Uh, the weight for the concrete, I'm using 145 so I can calculate the modulus of velocity based on uh, the ACI or the H2 formula that you can see in here. And then I have the parameters of my section, which is the uh, width of the rectangular 18 inches, and I have a depth of uh, 21 uh, inches. And I have an area of steel, which is uh, six of number eight bars uh, with a total area of 4.74 inches squared. The modulus of elasticity of concrete is calculated based on this formula in here. And the modulus of reinforcing steel is given as 29,000 KSI. And the modular ratio N will be uh, the ratio between the moduli of elasticity for both steel and concrete, which gives me 7.97. Some people like to round this up to 8. That's fine. Or uh, you can keep it as a given or as such. The loads for this particular case, I'm uh, giving you an ultimate moment of 380 kips foot. And also I have in my spreadsheet uh, cells that I can give uh, the value for the dead load and the live load and uh, with the applicable code I can get an ultimate strength uh, for this section. On this part I'm just giving you a reminder of the areas of uh, steel reinforcement that uh, we can use. The calculation is very simple in that case basically I just I uh, have my input information and I use my own code of colors just to clarify my spreadsheet. So I use blue for any input uh, cell. I use red for any calculated uh, cell and I use green for a simple equal sign uh, cell. So basically this cell just equals to this value. When I use the spreadsheet for more than one time, I can just worry about changing the parameters that are given in the uh, blue. This is the common strain in the concrete that our ultimate strength method based on. And we assume a strain of 0.03 and the strain in the steel will be uh, the 29,000 KSI over the yield stress of the steel, which is the 60 KSI or 60,000 PSI. And that gives me this value of 0.021 and that's my limiting uh, steel strain. This is a requirement by the ACI that my steel actually in the section should be uh, within these uh, uh, parameters. And I also can uh, satisfy this basically just by dividing this over the area of the section that I have. As you know, this is beta one, which basically defined a concrete block that I have based on the concrete strength. And this is a famous ACI or H2 uh, code formula that basically relates the strength of the concrete to that a block size. So basically, if this is uh, 5,000, then you can see that uh, this beta will go down to uh, 0.8. So we can go back and change this back to 4,000. And basically, 
uh, that's my beta one, which is the relationship between the location of uh, the neutral axis of the section, which separates the compression zone of concrete, which is this area in here, assuming that we have a positive moment acting like this, so the concrete will take the compression and the steel will take the tension out in the bottom. So the block actually is not the whole area to the neutral axis, but it's limited by this beta factor, which gives me A. For this simple bending moment tension uh, zone kind of section, it's very simple that we can calculate actually A by equating the forces between the tension and compression. So the force and the tension basically it's AS or the area of steel times the yield and the area of the concrete is 0.85 times the width of the section times A. So that's a simple equation which with one unknown that's A. Once I have the A value from this equation, as you can see it in here based on this cells that I have in my Excel, then I can get X by dividing uh, A over beta one. That gives me the neutral axis position. And once I can take, once I know the value of A as well, I can take moment about either one or basically just these two forces times the arm. And the arm in that case will be the depth minus A over two multiplied by the force in either one. And the force is easier to get from uh, basically the steel, which is the area of steel times uh, F yield. And the arm is given as D minus A over two. That gives me the moment. And I have a conversion here because I'm using the bounds and inches. I converted to kips and foot. And basically that will give me the value of the uh, bending moment capacity. I have to use a fee factor based on the codes. For the viewer case of bending, it's 0.9. Then my ultimate, uh, then my actual resistance moment will be uh, 0.9 of this value gives me about 400, which is more than the assigned uh, ultimate moment that I have. And that would be uh, check for my ultimate strength. So as you can see here, it's a very simple and uh, easy way of uh, calculating that uh, capacity for that to enforce the concrete section. For other codes, you can also, uh, we can talk about it maybe uh, in a different format. If you're checking due to ACI or ASH2 codes, then you have to also compare these uh, values of the minimum resistance that you can get from a section with the cracking moment, which is 1.2, the M cracking, or 1.33 M ultimate. And we can talk later about how you calculate the more cracking moment of uh, concrete for this section. So that's a quick check or quick design method for designing a single reinforced uh, concrete beam as the one you can see here. For the second case, if, what if you have a section that basically uh, also in addition to the enforcing tension steel, you have a compression steel. So we'll, we'll follow a similar procedure. Basically, I have my input in here, as you can see. And uh, for this, I'm using the same ultimate moment as the previous case. I give my dimensions of the section. And here I'm using two layers of steel bars, uh, AS1 and AS2 with different depths. One other way you can just lump all this area and take an average depth. And this is the steel and the compression zone. Assuming again that we have a positive moment zone like this, the tension side on this side and the concrete compression will be up top here. And this compression steel also will share some of this compression. These are the parameters similar to what I have before. 
I add a couple of bars in here uh, to represent the compression to number six. And again, I'm checking my uh, ratios of the seal according to the code. And I can use uh, same pattern in here. I have to correct this to double or single. If I don't have any compression steel, then I have to calculate now the forces that are acting on this system. Now, it's not one quick equation that I can use uh, to solve these unknowns. Basically, the tension in this steel and the compression in this compression steel and the compression in the concrete. But Excel actually gives me a very easy and nice way of handling this. Basically, I'll assume a value for X. So I do the opposite way to what I just said for the single reinforced case. So I assume a value for X and basically I'll go back and find A which is 0.85 in that case or beta one times X. And then I'll calculate my forces in here. The forces are the tension T1 and T2 and the concrete compression C and the steel compression C uh, sub S. And then I'll sum these forces. The summation of these forces for a pure bending case will be zero. And these are the equations that are given these forces. So now you can just try out some values and make sure that this is a zero. The good thing about uh, Excel in that case, it actually does this iteration for us. So we can use a very useful function in Excel in that case, and that would be from data. We go to what if analysis, and it's a very simple operation. Basically, I want to set a certain cell, which this one, the summation of all the forces, to equal to a value of a zero by changing a certain cell in here. So I want to change X or look for the X value that actually, after I calculate these forces, their summation will give me a pure moment and balance of these forces. So once I do that, I can solve for this one. So basically, let's just do it again, just to clarify. Say I have, I assumed first it is six, this number has to be a number. You cannot put a formula in that if you go to use what if statement. So basically I'll do it again. I want to set this cell, which not zero right now, to a value of zero by changing the cell X. And I say, okay. And here you go. Basically I have these forces summed to be equal to the zero, which is the summation of all these forces. And I have to take now moments, if I take moments about the CG of the concrete section, then I'll get the moment to do to each force. And if I sum them up, then I'll get my uh, maximum bending moment, which will equal the summation of these forces that I can add like this. And basically I take again, three times this moment, I get my uh, resistance or uh, moment capacity for the section. I compare it with M ultimate, which is more then my design is fine. Otherwise I have to change the dimensions of the section or change the, the steel. Interestingly, if we go back and look here, I use the same parameters. So basically adding those top two compressive steel members didn't really help much from 398 to about 401. But of course we need those bars anyways, those two bars up top so we can provide our stirrups to the enforced 
the intersection itself. So as you can see, it's a very efficient and uh, quick way of designing a W enforced concrete section uh, that uh, we can use Excel basically to solve for this equation, which is a second degree equation if you do it by uh, math. But this is a very simple way of trying to find the cross section uh, quickly. Here is a note about the forces. Basically, as you know, in design of reinforced concrete sections, we want to make sure that we have an underbalanced section and that the yield of steel will happen first before uh, the concrete crashing. And that's maintained by uh, realizing or making sure that the steel will yield. So basically, I'll take this value and make sure that it is more for uh, the assumption that steel has yielded first, which is true if this is more than this. For this particular case, notice that to calculate the stress in this compressive steel, which is less than the yield, don't use that yield stress of the compress of the steel itself, but rather use this strain value multiplied by the modulus of elasticity to give you the actual stress at that level of the compressive steel. That's why I'm using either the minimum of this value or the uh, value, which is the yield value of 0.0021. With that, I give you a very quick way of uh, designing a single reinforced concrete section and a double reinforced concrete section. And just to also show you that actually all the results will be similar. If I go back to my original section and make my section without any compressive uh, steel and I run this again, I get exact numbers as I did it when I considered the single reinforced section. Uh, with this, I thank you for your attention and look for for more uh, tutorials or videos like this one. Thank you.